Welcome and thank you for tuning in today as we zoom in on the Jags. I'm Dr. Jeff Sherman from the School of Health and Human Sciences, and my guest today is IUPUI women's soccer sophomore Maya Lacanado. Maya, how are you today as we get the month of March underway? I'm doing well. Kind of crazy that it's already March, but you know what? Doing well. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of weird that we've been almost a year with this pandemic, right? Yeah. All right, so what brought you to IUPUI? I want to kind of start, start off by asking you, what brought you to IUPUI? You know, that, the recruiting process. Tell us a little bit about what that deciding factor may have been. Well, in my re like recruiting process, honestly, IUPUI, I guess, could you say, was like not on the radar, basically. So I kind of, I knew about IUPUI because I live in Indiana and my high school team, when we went to state, we played our state games at IUPUI. And you went but, to Penn? Is that yes. right? Yes. So my junior year, our state game was at Butler and I wasn't committed anywhere. And my club coach actually helped me with this process. So um, I did pretty well in the state game, scoring a goal, and then our team ended up winning. And my club coach actually sent the video to Coach Johnson. And then a little while after, he called me saying like, hey, Maya, I'd love to have you come do a visit and everything like that. So I came, did the visit, overnight visit, stuff like that. And then in January, I went to an ID camp through Grand Park, where there's just like a bunch of college coaches. And then you get a different college coach, like each drill or each training session or each day. And I got coach Johnson. And after the camp, I was driving home with my dad and I got a call from him. He's like, Maya, I like, really liked what I saw. I would like to offer you to come play at IEPUI and me, I was kind of speechless because as a kid, you grow up wanting to play division one soccer and kind of getting that offer from a school that our team was able to play state at, a school that's right in the heart of Indy with lots of stuff to do um, and a very successful program. So I don't, it was hard for me to say no with everything that they had to offer. So were there other schools in the mix with you? I mean, what what, what, um, what other ones were looking at you? Uh, yeah, there were some other ones. Honestly, I had the rival Wright State was looking at me. Mm -hmm. um, so, but something about Indy being close to home, but kind of farther away, just really drew my attention to everything and the major basically. So I'm an exercise science major. So having all of those opportunities was very helpful. So what are the things that you, I guess, are striving for as an exercise science major? What do you want to do, I guess? Um, I'd like to be a personal trainer. So in high school for our soccer team, we had two personal trainers over the summer and I love working out. And so, and I love helping clients or athletes or anyone basically reach their full potential with anything that they're doing. And so if I thought I brought together my love for exercise leadership roles, um, loving seeing like people grow. I thought that would be something pretty fun to do. And when we don't have soccer, I like to make up my own little workouts. So I thought, why not put that into a career? Why not, right? Make it, <laughs> make it your career, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so if I were to ask you lift or run, is it lift or run for you? Um, well, I used to be running all the time. Like I would run for miles and miles. I actually do like lifting now, but I still have to say I do I do enjoy running. So much. you're not one of the ones that says running without a purpose is not something I want to do. <laughs> yeah, I rather I want I wouldn't be the casual. Hey, let's just go for a run. No, I want to be like, all right, this is in my workout. We're gonna go for a run. <laughs> so it's got to be part of something bigger, in other words. Yeah. I like, I like to hear that. That's kind of the way I feel about it too. I don't run ever. Uh, but needless to say, we've been through kind of a weird year. You know, let's just step back to your freshman year before we get into this year. Let's, uh, you, you had a pretty successful season, um, yeah. both you and the team. So kind of recap, I guess, that, that first year, you know, you got down here from Northern Indiana, you come mm -hmm. down to the city, right? It's a little bit different than where you're from. You know, it's, 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 we're talking city now. Right. Yeah. And so 
you get down here and how did that first year go? Well, it went better than, than I thought it was going to go basically besides the COVID that hit in March. Um, but coming from high school, it's a big change. So I'm not a person who's very good with change. So that's when you had to like leave your family and like be with a new team, I guess, because in high school or club soccer, you grew up with these girls playing with them. Now it's a whole new team, um, whole new coaching staff, basically a new lifestyle, like living on your own. And I kind of find myself independent. Like I like the things, I like to do things the way I want to do them. So kind of living on my own, I guess. I enjoyed that though. I didn't miss my family for the soccer aspect of it. It was a big uh, head turn, I guess you can say. The girls are faster, they're stronger, they're bigger. You could probably, you could be the best girl on your high school team or your club team. And then you come into division one soccer and it's a whole equal playing field now. Uh, you have to do the work when no one's watching to basically stand out in front of the rest. So I think that was a big wake up call, but overall I really enjoyed it. And it was just, it was a lot of fun. So we fast forward, right? We go through Christmas break, you get back on campus, you're getting ready to do the spring season and then all hell breaks loose. Talk yeah. about what, you know, what happened with you? You know, how did you respond to all of that when this first all came down a year ago? Well, honestly, we didn't know it was gonna, it started on the other side of the world. We didn't know it was gonna come here. So we were just kind of living life. And then it comes here and we're all just kind of like in our rooms and then you get the phone call. Oh, like everyone has to be sent home. And I'm like, call my parents. Hey, can you come get me? Like being sent home and stuff. Um, but I guess it did have an impact on me again with the whole, I don't really like change. I like everything to be very planned out. Um, writing in my like calendar, this, this, and this, and now having a bunch of scheduled things be taken away from me was kind of like, oof got to adjust to it. Um, but I do have to say that, not that I enjoyed the pandemic, but it was fun to have a lot of my family time, knowing that my brother plays soccer and is gone like every day for, or so with practices or games. My parents doing stuff like workout classes or anything, me having practice. So being able to be home with my family, playing games, doing stupid TikTok videos, everything, um, kind of brought us a lot closer and made up for a lot of that time. So even though it wasn't fun, there were some positives to it. So expand on that a little bit more. You know, you, you got that, you got that family time, you know, you're a, you're a first year, you're finishing up your first year, yeah. you get booted out of your room, you're sent back home and everything is flipped upside down on you right and yet you get home and now you're saying that it was it was a positive back at home and you know many people don't talk about that kind of kind of expand on that a little bit more about how you how did that i guess shift your normal right your new normal you were just getting used to this new normal you know yeah. the college life and things like that but now you're going back home to where you were like and i hate to put it this way because it sounds horrible but where you were like seven years old again right yeah. i mean you're, you're home all the time with your with your parents mm -hmm. outside of school right so talk about how that you know how did that feel well it was definitely weird because like you said i got used to the college life like living on my own but i consider myself a very like family person um like i said before my family is very close and us getting that time together meant more than anything. And though a lot of people were like, oh, I want to get back to college and all that stuff. I was kind of like, oh, you know what? I'm kind of enjoying this because it does make up for the lost time that my family's had because of our busy lives and everything. And I just look at like memories, whether it's like from my phone, like through pictures and like it just makes me smile because those are the days you're just going to look back. And though it was tough, those are the memories that you're going to love, whether it's like me and my brother, like goofing off, doing something stupid or like us. I remember we were on the kitchen table playing some card games and 
we were laughing so hard that nothing was coming out and like all of us were just crying and those are the times that you really live for and I'm very blessed that I was able to have those opportunities. Wow. That's awesome. I had to say, I had kind of the same experience with my family. I've got two young kids, so, you know, I get it, but to hear it come from a, a person who's a first year, you know, college student and they're like, yeah, my life is good and I'm, I'm on my own. And then all of a sudden you have to go home and it's like, oh, mom, dad, I'm back. Right. Yeah. That sort of thing. So, so you, you get to, you get through that and then you hit the summer and you're thinking, what are you thinking at this point as you, you know, you get through the, fir the, the first few months of this pandemic and you get into summer? What are you thinking at this point? Well, I'm really hoping that we're going to have a season. And a lot of changes happened when they were saying, oh, we were having team meetings. And it was like, okay, this group is going to come the beginning of July. This group is going to come the end of July. And we're hopefully going to have like a fall season. And then we get the phone calls. It's like, oh, wait. Now our fall season's pushed back. Oh wait, now we're only gonna, we're not gonna have fall seasons, just gonna be in the spring. Oh wait, we possibly could not have a spring season. So for me, it was just, it wasn't a, like a turn off or it wasn't like I wasn't gonna stop working basically. No matter what, I was gonna keep working. So when I entered, when we entered the pandemic basically, um, I tried to find a lot of alternatives to not having like a gym or anything. So luckily I was fortunate enough to be able to lift. And there was a field about 30 minutes away from me. It was a turf field, had the nets and everything. So I asked like my strength coach, hey, can you just like send me some voluntary workouts or can you like show me or like send me a website I can get some workouts from or like I would make up my own and I would do some lifting and running three times a week. And then I would do soccer um, three times a week. And for me, I'm very, I should say like self-motivated with everything. So even though we didn't know when we were gonna have a season or what the outcome was gonna be, I thought that this was a time for me to better myself, to get stronger, to get faster, get better touches on the ball, everything. And in my head, I thought, all right, Maya, well, there's probably, let's say a Milwaukee girl out there right now who's probably going for a two mile run or something. Are you gonna let her outwork you? And so I kind of had that mindset and I was like, all right, well, I'm not gonna let her do that. So then that's where I busted my butt and got to work. And I think I've seen some improvements from freshman year to this year. And my family has said the same thing and I won't stop working until I reach all of my goals or I'm satisfied. So you talked a little bit about that fluidity over the summer of we're coming, we're not going, we're going, we're not playing, we're, well, we might have a season, that uncertainty. How did that, I guess, how did that come in your brain? How was that functioning when it came to arriving back on campus with classes still being, you know, relatively virtual, you know, some face-to-face, -face, many online, you come back to campus and, you know, the environment is different. Kind of tell me a little bit about that as, as we're getting ready to, you know, your normal fall season. So it's a lot different yeah. now than what you have been used to. So kind of tell me a little bit about that and, and your mindset. How was it when you arrive back and everything's so fluid? It's up, down, up, down, good news, bad news, et cetera. Um, definitely hard because it was tiring going to, to, to team Zoom meetings. And it's like, coach is like, all right, I got one positive, but I got a few negatives. And it's kind of like, great, like, here we go again. Um, teams are getting positive tests or the season keeps getting pushed back or all of these things. And obviously it's out of our control. And that's one thing that I had to realize is that I can only control what I can control. So I don't have a say in, well, I think we should do this and this because it's, it's ultimately not my decision. So I really had to just take one day at a time. Um, I'm not like that. Like I said, want my everything planned out. But if I thought too far ahead, it would really stress me out. So I had to be like, all right, let's make a list for today. So this morning we're gonna wake up, we're gonna practice. 
Um, I'm gonna do some homework and just leave it at that. And I knew looking back from freshman year when everything got like kind of taken away, I realized that you can't take anything for granted. So at practices and weights, I would make sure to be energetic, fun, happy, and not let the little things get to me, even though they would, because the next day it could be taken away from me. And I wanna make sure I end that period like on a high note and be happy and not have any regrets for anything. So really taking it one day at a time and not taking anything for granted, especially like with classes, just use as many resources as possible if I was online or in person, anything like that. Now, I'm part of the SHHS, you're part of SHHS. You gotta tell me, are you enjoying the major? Are you enjoying what you're doing? What kind of classes are you taking? That sort of thing. I really enjoy it. I think one of my favorite classes was anatomy. Um, I just like the body and how everything works. It's it's kind of cool to see how like your muscles work and everything going with that and how it's such a broad thing that you can do so many like jobs with it and everything. That's awesome. So, okay, now we're going to, we're, we're heading into a positive here, Maya. I promise you, I'm not going to, I'm not going to hold on to this pandemic forever. So we're in the spring season. I guess you could call it the spring season, but it'll be your regular season. We, we're into it and you are so far as a team two for four. And when I say two for four, you've played two and you've lost two. I'm not saying lost as in win loss. I'm saying canceled, right? You're heading into what is a tough stretch. I mean, it's all conference, right? It's all horizon league. So, you know, how are you feeling as you head forward? You know, you've had a couple of really good games. You had a one nothing win against Cleveland state. You, you went for a full two overtime draw with Detroit mercy and, mm -hmm. but you, you lost two in the middle there. And how did yeah. that, how was that? I guess, I guess, how did that feel to, to lose those games, but not literally lose them, not play them? Well, it was unfortunate, but again with this pandemic you can do all the right things and then go to the grocery store and something happens to you so just kind of had to go with it i uh, i know like for me i was doing workouts in my room here just to make sure to keep up with everything but for us i guess we were doing really well like coming off of a year of not playing and getting a win in our first game when normally like that doesn't happen, I guess. Um, it was good to see, it was, it was nice. But then to have like a little stop, obviously it was very unfortunate. And you could kind of tell we were a little rusty in the first half of the Detroit game, but then we kind of picked it up and I was very happy to see how we played in the second half and the two overtimes. And if we can play like that for the rest of the season, I think, we could have a nice championship for us. <laughs> Did you ever think you'd have a spring season that actually counted for something? Uh, no. <laughs> I, I kind of figured that everyone would say, uh, no, I did not anticipate that. Okay, so you got to talk to me now about, you've got a group of girls together that are that are doing well to start. And mm -hmm. now you're headed, you're headed into what's the remainder of the season. You're headed to Milwaukee on Wednesday. Now, kind of, that's a that's always a big one, right? Now, what do you see? You, you said the team was playing well; they were coming together. You kind of got shut down, but you're back now. And mm -hmm. how are you? What are you thinking? What do you What do you foresee for the rest of the season? Well, I see that this team is very special. Um, to have us come together without playing soccer and being as close as we are. I think we have a very good team chemistry off the field. So like, it's not just like the freshmen, the sophomores, juniors, seniors. You have seniors who are friends with freshmen, sophomores, friends with uh, juniors, which is everyone together. And then on the field, I also think we have a very strong chemistry. We have a lot of great players. We have great players in each position. And so you have the starters and then even people coming off the bench can fill in those roles and be potential starters. And so I do think that this is a winning team. And as long as we just stay healthy, keep working hard at practice, um, I'm very excited to see what the end result will be. 
but I do know that I will be very sad because we do have a strong group of seniors and everyone who will be leaving after this year and wishing that we did have a fall season because then this team could be together for the fall playing conference and non-conference games. And then in the spring, if some of the seniors want to play in the spring, but even though, or now that we only have a spring, that kind of sucks, but we just got to make the most of everything. And I do think that we can win it this year. I love to hear the confidence. <laughs> Thank you, Maya, for joining us here today. Be sure to follow IUPUI Women's Soccer at IUPUI WSOC and the Sports Management Club at IUPUI at SMC underscore IUPUI on Instagram for the latest episodes. Thank you again, Maya, for joining me today. Have a great rest of your day.